So, Shoja, could you provide an overview uh, of multi-cloud infrastructure and its uh, significance in today's tech landscape? Uh, that's a very good question, Daya. And before we deep dive into multi-cloud, it's always good to create a baseline around it. Um, I will try to explain this with an analogy and with an example as well. Uh, there, there is a, a workload running for me under my management, under my control, under my maintenance as well. Uh, in an on-prem uh, environment. So everything that is uh, to be scaled, to be maintained, to be observed is done by me, by my team. And that is whole uh, private cloud that we are running in on-prem uh, setup. So, but uh, sooner or later we identify that there, there is an uh, effective solution available on public cloud in a way uh, that is uh, more optimized in performance, uh, maybe reduce in cost as well. I will try to extend my on-prem services to that uh, service available on the public cloud and create a setup where my private net network is being connected with that public network in a secure manner and have that optimized solution to be part of my network. So that is what hybrid cloud technology comes in. As far the multi-cloud setup goes, it's always about the public cloud and yet we do have a setup where we try to incorporate private clouds as well into that. But more famously, the multi-cloud setup is always around these uh, key players like AWS, Azure, Oracle, GCP, uh, maybe Alibaba Cloud as well. So these cloud are utilizing their resources into multiple directions and dimensions as well and making sure to have a very optimized solution in place. Thank you. So Shetra, what are some common challenges organizations face when uh, implementing a multi-cloud deployment strategy? Um, so, um, think from challenges perspective, um, one of the major uh, pain areas um, whenever we are thinking of contemplating um, shifting toward multi-cloud is, is the complexity of the whole setup. Uh, of course, uh, especially if you are managing distributed systems across multiple clouds and if you also have a flavor of on-prem with it as well, so that's uh, uh, numerous amounts of services, configurations, uh, which can lead to a lot of complexity of how you're, you know, how you're maintaining the tiers of your application, and how you're putting them all over the So the architecture of such a setup is definitely something that you have to spend considerable time on. So um, for any such setup, uh, we have to be uh, very particular about the architecture that we are designing for such services and such resources. Uh, we have to be very, um, it, it has to be a very intricate design which considers all the uh, tiers that are involved in your application development. So due to the complexity of such setups, uh, there is also an increased operational overhead uh, in such designs uh, where you do have to take care of the maintenance and the monitoring and additional resources that need to be given to all of the you know, uh, integration that you've done and uh, monitor it and continuously make seamlessly keep connecting them together. So in, in such situation, uh, the operational overhead also increases in increase. So, um, keeping in mind all this kind of complexity and complex designs that you have to uh, take care of uh, when talking about multi-cloud, there is an increased concern about security, um, data consistency, uh, compliance management as well. So, uh, whenever you're designing something on multi-cloud, there's an increased uh, concern about how the you know, data transfer and the inter uh, cloud communication is happening. Of course, the security uh, concerns on, on those areas are very really, uh, high importance to every organization. Uh, other than that, of course, the data consistency and synchronization also becomes a challenge on such a big scale when you're like dealing with at least one or two multi uh, public clouds and maybe even a private cloud in there. So it becomes very difficult to uh, manage the data synchronization overall or in your company. In, in addition to these uh, security challenges, if uh, the areas that you work in are in your geographical areas, if they impose some regulatory uh, compulsions on you as well. So uh, those compliances also need to be taken care of, uh, which may be something that applies uh, on transit data or maybe stored data or how you're defining your APIs and things like that. So all of those regulatory compliances are also become an essential part of that design. Thank you, Sidra. On top of what uh, Sidra is saying, Shuja, do you think there are some additional points? 
Chap, uh, first of all, these are uh, very valid points that Sidra mentioned, and I think that should be the baseline where we start discussing all these kind of things. But there are a few things that I would like to add on on top of it, like uh, the cost uh, aspect of uh, managing the uh, multi cloud uh, environment as well. Uh, when it when it comes to cost management in the multi cloud domain, it's it's very challenging. It's uh, very difficult to keep yourself updated with all the services and technologies that are coming out there. And very frequently, these uh, common cloud providers do have active changes to their cost management strategies around it as well. Um, uh, just, uh, just, uh, it's not like that. They just one fine day change everything. There is always a pre-communicated, pre-updated ways of how they uh, make changes to that. But keeping yourself updated with all these cloud providers that you are working with and the services and their uh, costing model is very important to understand how that. Uh, and one of the uh, famous, uh, you know. Reasons why people opt for multi-cloud is vendor lock-in. But again, uh, to get out of it, vendor lock-in is another trap in multi-cloud as well. Uh, take it as an example: if if I am using AWS RDS as a serverless uh, a database solution for my infrastructure for my application, so I will be building my application around that. My all core competencies of it will be running as per that solution or uh, service that I am using. But when it comes to moving uh, or maybe scaling your database to other cloud platforms, you will not be getting all the features that RDS possesses as of now. So this will become another challenge and as a vendor lock-in challenge as well for you. So uh, as an expert, you need to make sure you are, uh, you know, scaling your application as per uh, the scaling model that is available out there for the multi-cloud purposes. Um, and last but not least, the skill set and expertise you need to always. Keep yourself check in with that, and make sure your team, that your existing team, are being trained and you know being skilled on the cloud providers that you are working with, and finding such uh, the, you know the people or maybe the talent having uh, all cloud exposures are always very difficult. But it's not like a very very uncommon thing. In now world, there are a lot of people who have been exploring or getting their hands dirty on multi cloud approaches. So. That is one of the challenging element. I would I, I would love to add on top of what Sita mentioned. Awesome. So Shurja, how do existing on-prem infrastructure considerations impact design and implementation of multi-cloud strategy? Uh, uh, when it comes to designing your system for multi-cloud approach as compared to on-prem solutions, because in most of the cases on-prem solutions are very legacy dependent and our implementation are very legacy. Uh, for for a multi cloud approach, you need to have multiple considerations. For example, um, there there is a service available in a cloud provider which facilitates me because of the performance reasons, because of the management reasons, and maybe it's a serverless approach as well out there. Uh, but on on the other hand, there is another service available on another cloud, and 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 that is more uh, you know uh, well suited for my approach. So I will be designing a solution which makes sure that both these cloud are working together hand in hand, making sure providing us security, better latency, better performance, and interoperability as well. So uh, we need to make sure their connectivity are going through VPNs or maybe direct connect facilities, and making sure they are operating on the minimum latency available out there. Uh, uh, but when it comes to deployment, uh, usually on on-prem we go to solutions like Jenkins, maintained in a uh, in an on-prem setup. But when it comes to cloud, there are multiple cloud providers having a very vast technologies around DevOps. When it comes to Azure DevOps, when it comes to uh, developer tools available on AWS, similarly goes for GCP and Oracle Cloud. So there are a lot of different variety of options available. Even there are some third-party tools available which are very cloud native for multi-cloud approaches, such as Argo CD, and again the enterprise version available for Jenkins. So these are very smarter considerations when it comes to designing your system around multi-cloud. Thank you, Shuja. Uh, when evaluating multi-cloud strategy and cloud providers, what are the key factors um, that we need to, you know, prioritize? Uh, first and foremost, uh, on a technical standpoint, we need to understand the service in point uh, in the point of discussion we are having right now. So we need to understand uh, the reliability, the availability, and the maturity of the service that we are using or maybe planning to use for it. So uh, we need to understand the roadmap, uh, the journey of the service that have been on the cloud provider for it, uh, and also make sure uh, the features and solutions that are available out there. Uh, these would be a very critical metric to make our decision to which cloud provider we should opt for. Uh, other than that, uh, we need to make sure the skill set 
available in, in our team as well. If they are not able to uh, utilize it, and we are investing more and more time in getting ourselves trained, and rather than building the application, so we are already uh, hitting our targets of uh, time to the market as well. Um, and last but not least, uh, it's always about around the cost and the company posture as well. Uh, if I have my whole solution running in some cloud cloud provider already available out there, but there is a very intriguing uh, you know partnership and packages available for me from another cloud provider, so I should always look for that route because it's going to be ultimately benefiting my business, benefiting my costing, and can have a lot of burden loan on on the on the business uh, posture as well. How do distributed systems principles like consistency, availability, and partition tolerance uh, play a part in um, you know defining the strategy in multi-cloud environment? Um, I, I think the basic essential difference between a multi-cloud application that's required and non-multi-cloud is the um, like higher likelihood of partition space. Uh, in multi-cloud, we have a higher likelihood of that. Uh, whereas when we're talking of non-multi-cloud uh, environments, that's generally reserved to one single environment, and we have to design a resilient system which just you know uh, exists in one environment. So um, based on this higher likelihood of partitions, what we really need to take care of in a multi-cloud environment is balancing of consistency. Uh, availability and the partition tolerance for geographically distributed data. All of that needs to be taken care of for a multi cloud. Whereas these considerations become kind of like limited to a single environment and hence uh, less complex to handle in, in, in a standard environment for that matter. Uh, some of the best practices that we always make sure that we are taking care of while uh, designing multi cloud. Data. Um, it's it's um, standardized uh, APIs, is number one. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, when we are using standardized APIs like REST or gRPC for communication between applications, it kind of simplifies the integration and helps us grow even afterwards uh, into the system, uh, reduces the vendor logging uh, overall uh, for the multi-cloud environment. Uh, other than that, uh, asynchronous communication is, is something that we um, really uh, is it, at the heart of all of this communication that happens in the multi-cloud environment. Um, using messaging queues uh, like Apache Kafka or NVM SQS to basically uh, the spirit of it being to decouple the application and the handling of the network latency and partitioning uh, gracefully. So when, once we are uh, doing asynchronous communication, our uh, minimum, minimal information is lost in the process and in the transit or uh, during the processing times. Um, uh, other than that, uh, I would also uh, consider API having API gateways as an important uh, practice that we need to inculcate in such application designs uh, to manage access control, rate limiting, and to traffic routing for the APIs that are being exposed by the applications in different clouds. So um, other than these practices, uh, some, some of the other concerns uh, that we also have to um, inculcate while designing the application are, uh, for example, a circuit breaker mechanism, uh, heat dry mechanism, uh, we have to uh, ensure that uh, there is a distributed tracing mechanism which is there, which makes sure that if your communication is breaking at any point, we know where it breaks and we are able to debug it and we are able to resolve it in time. Uh, because of course, uh, the, uh, the scale of a multi-cloud is obviously, uh, it, it can grow uh, very easily uh, and it can become something uh, which is not manageable if we do not place all of these uh, traceability and monitoring and alerting, uh, they need to be in place uh, in such systems as well to understand uh, what is the health of your communication, what is the health of your network latency, what is the health of your overall routing as well. Uh, so all of these uh, practices are definitely important. And I think um, lastly, uh, but still a very important consideration and practice is uh, making sure uh, that we have taken care of all the security considerations while we design this. Uh, these security contributions include uh, encryption in transit and of at, at rest. 
uh, identity and access management practices, and of course, uh, monitoring of our security, uh, you know, uh, ends and breaches, and if there have been any incidences regarding them as well. So all of these together uh, definitely are important by design thinking. Awesome. So, Shoja, can you walk us through some of these successful multi-cloud deployments and considerations? So, uh, there are a lot of strategies that comes into my mind, but as of now, I would like to discuss a few of it. Uh, first of all, workload distribution. Um, we need to understand when it comes to multi-cloud approach, you, you as, as an architect, you should never feel hesitant uh, in, into opting another cloud platform that provides a better performance, a better cost. Uh, no matter what the reason would be for opting that cloud provider, you should always be embracing uh, utilizing that. Uh, for example, if if uh, if we have an application or we design an application that is a very compute heavy application, and uh, we are operating on cloud A, and we, there is a cloud B available out there that provides much better performance uh, in instances for compute based resources. So I should always embrace that and make sure my application is running and uh, an interoperability operating with, with that cloud provider with current existing platform that we have. So the, the, these would be my workload distribution and, and we should also consider the geographic location of my user base as well. Uh, and that is one of the key areas where we need to decide which cloud providers we should opt for and how we should evenly distribute our implementation as well. If we do have customer uh, uh, location, uh, maybe located into multiple geographic locations, then we should spread over all uh, workload based on multiple uh, multiple regions. And then there are some cloud providers which don't have, you know, the geographic location or geographic presence in uh, a lot of locations where your user base is. You need to always opt for other cloud providers for in such scenarios. Other than that, uh, I would also uh, discuss uh, automated uh, deployment strategies around this. Uh, and uh, as, as always, uh, as, a, as an infrastructure developer, you should always opt for automated solutions available out there, uh, famously known as Terraform and also uh, Ansible. These solutions are always, all, always there to protect your systems and uh, these are um, systematically generated code and, uh, and not, uh, you know, uh, manually operated mainly. And it is always a version controlled uh, implementation where obviously you, you can always review and vet your implementation before rolling out to production. And this will, uh, this, the, these kind of solutions are, are always human error prone and uh, this will always make sure that your implementation are being reviewed, being tested and being, uh, you know, produced after a rigorous uh, uh, testing around it. Sounds good, Sedra. Would you like to add something? Um, the, I think whenever I talk about uh, developing multi-cloud based application, one thing that comes to my mind, the key principle is, is decoupled, loosely coupled. So that is what we do with the communication uh, when we're setting up communications and such applications. That is what we do for the set application architecture itself. That is why the microservices architecture comes in, you know, because they give an increased scalability and of course lesser amount of dependability on other services that they run with. Uh, this is where containerization also comes in, you know, because uh, if you are leveraging uh, containerization technologies like Docker and Kubernetes to package application and their dependencies, it ensures consistent execution across different clouds and a uniform execution mm -hmm. throughout. So that definitely helps with keeping uh, things at bay and under control. Um, and lastly, I would say it, it, it has to be a totally API driven design. It has to be um, something uh, where the resources can interact seamlessly uh, regardless of the underlying platform. So Shuja, how do organizations ensure security and compliance across different cloud providers in multi-cloud environment? So when it comes to security and compliance, there are multiple strategies available from all cloud providers out there. Uh, but uh, as an architect, you need to make sure you opt for the centralized approach uh, for the access and identity management. And uh, also do make sure that all our strategies and approaches are least privilege based and making sure that only people with the necessary and uh, compliance access are getting the relevant access around there. Uh, other than that, uh, uh, there should be a multi-factor authentication implementation. Uh, and also make sure that people are not utilizing the only soft version of it, but also utilizing the hardware version of it. And it will make sure that users are uh, on the top notch of security when, when it comes to the access and identity management. 
Um, another best practice around security and compliance having data encryption in place. Uh, no matter whether it be at, at rest or in transit, we need to make sure that uh, our data is being encrypted. Uh, although all cloud providers do provide these uh, so solution out of the box, but the challenge when it comes to multi-cloud is always around having a centralized key management service that is being utilized for encrypting and decrypting all these information that are being transmitted over the uh, network that we have set up. Uh, when it comes to talking about the network, we need to make sure that our network setup is also a very compliant and, and, and secure as well. We need to make sure uh, balance our workload based on their characteristics and properties as well. Uh, if it is something that needs to be categorized in the under the private network, it should be set up and utilized under the private network. It should not be exposed on the you know public plane out of, out out there. And if it is a service that needs to be publicly available, it should be uh, exposed. But keeping in mind that that security protocols are also in place through uh, you know secure as a load balancer and uh, something like that that make sure that uh, the the data is being protected through web application firewalls or uh, other strategies of DMZs and making sure that uh, every network being monitored and filtered and even you know mirrored for compliance with the regulators as well. So Sidra, how do you approach cost optimization in a multi-cloud environment? Visibility, uh, monitoring, observability. These are like uh, the key to get key words for uh, making sure that we keep our costs in, in, in our control. Uh, when it comes to visibility and monitoring, uh, we should be having a consolidated billing. Uh, most of uh, the cloud uh, service providers already provide that for their clouds, but uh, then we do have some solutions such as Anthos and we have Azure Arc. Which so um, uh, consolidated billing, uh, that, that is one uh, key factor. Uh, we at all costs uh, should be knowing uh, what our resources are costing us uh, throughout and on all of the uh, cloud platforms that we have um, subscribed for. Um, cloud cost management tools, uh, there are multiple tools uh, available out there, even in open source, and um, most of them are even built in uh, with the cloud uh, service providers, uh, such as uh, cloud cost and um, cube cost. Um, for cloud cost is basically for optimizing the cloud cost as, as well, and cube cost is to monitor the cost uh, of Kubernetes clusters, basically. Uh, so such tools should be incorporated uh, within your infrastructure to make sure that your costs uh, stay at their minimum at all levels. Uh, then of course tagging to make sure that uh, all of your resources, uh, you know, they are uh, meaningful tags, kind of ensure that uh, they are uh, up to good use and no redundant uh, resources are just uh, lying there uh, unnecessarily. Um, other than that, <coughs> right sizing, uh, I think um, right sizing is, is also a key uh, concept uh, for, for when it comes to uh, actually that's just for any cloud deployment, uh, not just multi-cloud itself. And uh, so are the uh, saving plans such as reserved instances uh, for cloud providers as well. Uh, so all of these things together, they help you keep the uh, costs at, at minimal. Um, other than that, uh, we, we can uh, additional strategies that we can take care of uh, while um, you know uh, implementing uh, our solution in the multi-cloud environment is to optimize the data transfer itself because that itself is a cost that gets added to it eventually. So uh, making sure that our data transfers are as minimalistic as possible kind of saves the cost and you know uh, keeps it under check. Awesome. So Shuja, what are some of the tools and technologies that can help organizations manage, orchestrate workloads across various cloud platforms? Uh, when it comes to multi-cloud, one of the biggest challenge uh, in, in management and maintaining of the cloud is to have a unified centralized plane where we can observe, uh, you know, uh, monitor and manage our workloads around that. So the, there are multiple tools that are, that are available out there to provide you such a dashboard where you can you know uh, see, monitor, and even you know deploy and even delete resources needed uh, through that platform. So in my mind right right now, I can see BMC Cloud is one of the names uh, that comes out of it, and uh, there is Cloudbold, uh, the, which which is very famous for for such approaches. 
Uh, other than that, we need to also make sure that our all implementation is being automated through infrastructure as a code, such as we are utilizing Terraform, CloudFormation, uh, maybe CloudFormation not, not, not going to be a better fit because it's very AWS dependent, but maybe Ansible and tools like these uh, which are out there to manage and centralize your configuration management as well. So these uh, would be tools and technologies which, which will be very helpful when it comes to multi-cloud approach and make sure that your, your multi-cloud implementation are at, at, at the very you know, centralized managed and very at, at, at the optimal level that is out there. Uh, and, and as far the deployment goes, there are multiple tools and technologies that are available out there. Uh, one of the famous one is uh, Azure DevOps, which is not just for Azure uh, for based workloads, but it can deploy workloads into multiple cloud platforms as well after having a secure integration done already. Uh, other than that, there is a Spinnaker and you know Spring Cloud, which is very famously known as for you know multi cloud deployment and handling uh, deployment into across multiple platforms as well. So, Sidra, uh, from a distributed system standpoint, uh, would you like to add something on top of Shoja's comments? Sure, Steve. Um, I would just like to add here that uh, generally Kubernetes is considered a go-to multi-cloud uh, deployment solution as well, but multi-cloud uh, Kubernetes itself requires an orchestrator as well because a Kubernetes, it's, it becomes very difficult to manage Kubernetes clusters in a multi-cloud environment in different clouds and on-prem as well. So uh, there are a number of tools out there in the market uh, to do this Kubernetes orchestration for us as well. Um, it gives you a single window of observability for all the clusters in different cloud environments. Uh, one of them being the Google Cloud Anthos, um, Azure Arc is also one of them. Uh, so all of these Kubernetes orchestration tools are there which help us deploy um, you know, uh, Kubernetes in multiple multi-cloud environments as well. So uh, the best thing about that is it brings all the monitoring all the deployments, all the even deployment strategies uh, in one place, in one window. And then it kind of makes your life easy to uh, manage uh, multi-cloud applications and their deployments and uh, to manage their complete life cycle. So let's talk about addressing operational challenges. So how can organizations effectively manage and troubleshoot issues in a multi-cloud environment? So yeah, so basically this, this uh, operational related challenges, we always uh, term it as day two operations uh, for, any, for any workload that is being running on the cloud or maybe on a multi-cloud approach. So there are uh, quite multiple tools that can help us in, you know, the effectively observe and monitor things. And obviously once, uh, once they are being alert, alerted to us and we can obviously make strategies around, you know, rectifying those uh, issues automatically as well and sometime manually. But uh, there are multiple tools that can be utilized for such avenues, such as Datadog, uh, maybe incorporated with PagerDuty for alerting mechanism as well. And there are New Relic, uh, there is New Relic as well, which which can be utilized as an APM management solution as well. Uh, when it comes to you know monitoring and operation of, of the implemented cloud of uh, infrastructure, uh, we always terms it as day two operations, and it always uh, revolves around observability and monitoring of the infrastructure. Uh, the key components here is that we make sure that we are being alerted on time and we are taking the appropriate actions automatically sometime and sometime manually as well uh, to rectify all those issues and when it comes uh, to multi-cloud approach you need to be on war footing to understand where exactly in which cloud pro provider and which service being impacted for the whole uh, and creating whole mess in the whole infrastructure. Uh, uh, the, the tools that I would recommend over here would be Datadog, uh, maybe incorporated with PagerDuty for alerting and mechanism for timely manners. Uh, and there would be New Relic, uh, maybe Check.io for Kubernetes based workload. Uh, there are multiple solutions that can be utilized for you know alerting mechanism and you know even remediation as well. Uh, but overall, uh, all these provide you know a unified centralized plane for multi-cloud approaches and through that you can always, always have a better observability and monitoring. Uh, some, there are some open source tools as well, uh, uh, such as Prometheus and Grafana, which is kind of a very, uh, you know, uh, freely available out there, but very, you know, maintenance heavy. Uh, and, you know, because of that, we do have a very third party solution such as Datadog and that I mentioned already. So, Sedra, what emerging technologies do you see impacting the multi-cloud environment? Um, see, there has been uh, an exponential growth when it comes to uh, deployments uh, in multi-cloud uh, and technologies that support it. 
Um, as I mentioned earlier as well, uh, one of the important points among, among them are Google Cloud, Anthos, and uh, Azure Arc, and how they have been able to uh, deploy these, uh, you know, uh, in, in efficiently. How they have been uh, able to manage clusters, which are uh, which can be scaled uh, at, at larger uh, at larger number, and uh, can maintain that uh, simultaneously on multi clouds. Uh, so with with that kind of uh, power and scalability coming in, I, I think uh, the first thing uh, that we see is that, you know, uh, it, it can help us uh, move multi-cloud into uh, domains such as telecom, such as uh, 5G readiness, uh, you know, uh, all of these, uh, for example, uh, Anthos itself is uh, 5G ready by now and, and, and it is being adopted by the telecom companies as well. So uh, this is this is like a great development that we, we can see happening in, in the in the area of um, multi cloud. Um, other technologies that I see impacting uh, multi cloud uh, deployments is uh, you know uh, the AI uh, because uh, I mean we, we see a lot of things and how the AI has been uh, taking uh, you know uh, cloud be it be it the cloud optimization be it the deployments be it uh, the uh, exact right sizing of your resources on the cloud uh, AI can and, and ML can definitely help you do that uh, other than that integration fabrics service meshes uh, the faster your uh, uh, communication becomes um, if, among the uh, clouds the faster of course your uh, performance is going to be uh, the optimization is going to be uh, blockchain for secure data sharing uh, that is definitely one thing that I foresee in future that can be very instrumental in helping us uh, making sure of uh, transactional uh, data sharing among the uh, cloud uh, you know, uh, cloud transfers uh, and then of course uh, quantum safe cryptography uh, that can definitely uh, from security perspective uh, be an excellent addition to that as well. So th these are some of the things and, and actually there are like uh, multiple um, domains opening up which now gel into multi-cloud and help us uh, improve the overall deployments that we do. Okay, uh, Shruja, uh, what advice would you like to give to organizations starting on their journey to multi-cloud uh, environment? So actually it won't be just an advice, it would be advice. Uh, I, I would always recommend everyone who is uh, starting you know, their journey towards the multi-cloud always starts small uh, rather than, uh, you know, fully investing into the multi-cloud approach or maybe migrating your whole workload over there. So try to, you know, identify a non-critical workload initially that you can, you know, move around uh, to another cloud provider and start just with one cloud provider out there other than which, which you are currently using. Once you gain some confidence on uh, with, when, uh, with one service and maybe one workload, you can you know start adding more cloud providers to that and make sure you always making decision based on you know performance and compute matrices that we have already mentioned. Uh, other than that, I would always recommend have a security first mindset. Uh, make sure that your uh, implementation are ZTA, that is zero trust architecture based, and also uh, centralized centralized uh, identity and access management. Uh, for you know all access workload that you are providing to your users and along with that also make sure you are implementing uh, multi-factor authentication along with that as well uh, embrace automation uh, that is one of the very key role that plays a very key role in uh, when it's come to managing your workload on the cloud uh, not just uh, multi-cloud or even in on a single cloud as well but through uh, you know automation strategy and tools and technologies you can always make sure that everything that being rolled out to your production is being you know uh, tested and you know reviewed and vetted before it uh, going to release out there um, Okay, break like a bother, okay. Um, and make sure that you monitor and optimize continuously. Uh, don't be someone who is very hesitant to, you know, uh, make changes to your infrastructure based on uh, things that are being piled up on your monitoring uh, dashboards. Make sure you are making active decision around that. Uh, also, last but not least, invest your in your team, in your skill set, uh, train them to make sure they are uh, up to the mark for managing their workload on the multi cloud. So probably this, this is a question to both of you. Uh, what are some of the common misconceptions and uh, myths about uh, multi-cloud environments? One of the most common misconceptions about multi-cloud uh, deployments and implementations is that it eliminates vendor locking. 
Uh, however, fact is that if you are relying on one cloud provider more and utilizing one service more uh, and heavily, you know, on a specific set of services, uh, maybe if your uh, application is deployed on them more, uh, in that case, the vendor lock-in is still there. So uh, it can reduce the dependence on single pro provider, but it doesn't completely eliminate the vendor lock-in. Uh, the, the choice to eliminate vendor lock-in is basically on the uh, team which actually architects the application. So it's it's responsibility for your architects before they deploy the application, before they develop the application. Um, there is a very famous myth around uh, multi-cloud that it is inherently more secure. Uh, I would say it is not inherently more secure. You have to make it secure before you call it inherently more secure. Uh, you need to have strategies around uh, centralized management of uh, users, centralized management of key access management, uh, centralized management around the keys being utilized for encryption and decryption. Uh, you need to make sure that uh, all these cl cloud providers that you are using are also being integrated with each other to have a centralized platform available out there. Okay. Uh, one of the most common uh, myths about multi-cloud is that multi-cloud is just deploying an application over multiple clouds. But the reality is that using multiple cloud providers to actually optimize your IT infrastructure, that is what the target of multi-cloud is about. It's not just putting your applications or your infrastructure out there on multiple clouds. Sounds good. Uh, we normally hear that um, you know multi-cloud deployments bring in or mitigate single point of failure. So do you guys agree with that? It can, but again, it would de depend totally on how you have architected your application. Your, if you are again not creating a single point of failure among that, you know, if, if you're creating it in a way which is decoupled or loosely coupled and it's asynchronous, then yes, uh, then that would give mitigate the risk of failure. Yeah. So, okay. So from an infrastructure standpoint, Shuja, every cloud provider is designed by default to mitigate single point of failure. So how a multi-cloud strategy is going to add an additional layer or it, it's going to help the organizations with that? Uh, I think that, yeah, that is one of another myth that uh, all these strategies having you know multiple AZs, multiple regions, uh, and maybe spreading your deployment across multiple regions can handle you know single point of failure yes it is in route to handling single point of failure but it not completely mitigates that uh, for that there is always a suggestion to go for a multi-cloud approach uh, a obviously it will be a total different ecosystem out there uh, to handle all your workloads and uh, having uh, maybe a dr side on another cloud platform it will always increase your reliability and you know availability of your infrastructure other than that, uh, it will also g give you some cost benefit as well because when you operate around multiple vendors, there will always be better offering and better packages available out, out there for you as a customer when you are providing them a, a scale of uh, infrastructure as well. So, uh, not uh, I, I would say it, it's just a myth, but yeah, uh, it not completely mitigates it, but it is in route to mitigation of single point of failures. Uh, there is another myth around uh, multi-cloud that it is very cost efficient. Uh, I would say it is not until unless you made it cost efficient uh, because one of the hidden charges are always kick in when you go for multi-cloud approaches, especially for egress and ingress uh, workloads. And sometimes you know your uh, your workload spread over multiple services give you some other hidden uh, costing uh, incursion as well. So the the way around that is to make sure that all your communication are being transmitted through VPNs uh, that are being connected or uh, maybe direct connection that are being connected between uh, different clouds and the only route that is being uh, utilized between inter-cloud communication is only that is uh, that we have configured. So this way you will always handle hidden charges that occurs around the ingress and egress of, it, of your network communication. Uh, another very common myth, uh, of course, it arises from this perception that multi-cloud is too complex to manage. But uh, the reality is that uh, given the infrastructure as a core facility, such as IAC, such as Terraform and Cloud Formation and uh, CMP tools that are out there uh, to be used in, in such an environment, uh, it becomes very easy uh, to deploy and complete lifecycle of your application over multi-cloud environment. It is almost as easy as deploying it in a single environment. 
from all of these discussions that we are having, um, it's quite evident that it's not an easy job. It's not a walk in the park. So uh, multi-cloud deployment, even to strategize that or even to think about implementing, you need to have strong team and mechanisms. Um, so do you guys have these expertise here at XGrid uh, and you guys uh, feel confident that you can take care of these challenges? Yes, they, uh, we are actively involved in, in, uh, with some of our clients and providing them similar solutions, uh, helping them uh, develop multi-cloud uh, solutions. Uh, in fact, we one one of our clients that we are currently also engaging with that that's like taking up a legacy on-prem environment and actually helping them move to uh, in 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 a in a, um, in, in a scaled manner, helping them uh, move to the multi-cloud setup. Uh, of course, uh, the, the client requirement was that it's, it's like a highly scaled system that we are looking into. So the, all the considerations, uh, security, cost optimization, data flow, all of these considerations kind of become, uh, it, 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 they increase by many fold when it's at, at, at uh, bigger scales. So, you know, uh, that is definitely something that's quite a challenge, but we are definitely looking into it right now and really enjoying their work. Uh, as for the infrastructure uh, development goes, so we are very actively involved with multiple customers uh, which do hold uh, their application implemented across multiple cloud platforms. Uh, one of the motivation behind that because uh, they, they are very cost sensitive and they are looking for services which are you know uh, highly efficient as far the cost goes. Uh, in, and they are spread across over multiple cloud platforms. So, providing them an automated single click solutions for, for their workloads through Terraform and Ansible, that is one of the key things that we have been doing. Uh, we are also using Chef Puppet for, for multiple you know, configuration management and workload management for them as well. Uh, we do have that dedicated specialization uh, in our team. Uh, we have been working with numerous uh, solutions uh, which have been uh, involving multiple cloud providers. Uh, such as Google, AWS, Azure, OCI, and of course uh, VMware TCP as well. So we have been in, uh, creating uh, multi-cloud solutions for our clients uh, using these. Um, uh, in this, uh, I, I think uh, the, the basically the Kubernetes orchestrators that we have been mostly utilizing uh, so far have been Azure R, uh, Google Anthos, um, you know, and for cloud orchestration. BMC Cloud as well. So uh, these are some of the solutions that we have been working with uh, in the past. Uh, deploying solutions, have, uh, these solutions have been um, for companies uh, which have uh, which have had uh, telco level scales as well. So yeah, uh, it has been very interesting for us to have that capacity uh, in our team. Uh, thank you, Sidra and Shaja. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you, and thank you for your time and insights. Thank you, Thank you for having us. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.